Grand Duchess Maria Nikolaevna, the third daughter of Tsar Nicholas II and Empress Alexandra, Grand Duchess Maria Nikolaevna was born on June 26, old style June 14, 1899 at the Peterhof Palace, St. Petersburg, Russia. Born with big, round blue eyes and light brown hair, Maria dreamed of having a large family. She loved fussing and playing with children. She had a very sweet, kind, and friendly personality, and loved to talk to people and had simple tastes. However, at times, she could also be a little stubborn. When Maria was a little girl one day, she was with her sisters in her mother's boudoir. Alexandra had little vanilla-flavored waffles called Biblican, which the children loved. However, they were not allowed to ask for anything from the tea table, and little Maria, quite proudly, took a Biblican from the tea table and ate it. Maria was going to be punished for it, but Nicholas stepped in and said, I was always afraid of the wings growing, and I am glad to see she is only a human child. Maria enjoyed art, being able to sketch very well, her art drawing, with her left hand, and write with her right, making her ambidextrous. She could also play the piano, but not as well as Olga and Tatiana. She played also played the balalaika. Her name day was the 22nd July, and her sisters nicknamed her Fat Little Bow Wow. Because she had such large blue eyes, they were nicknamed Marie's Saucers. Maria, like her sisters, was called by the patronymic Maria Nikolaevna by family, servants, and friends. She was brought up as simply as possible, having to take cold baths every morning and having to sleep on hard camp cots. Maria and her younger sister Anastasia were often referred to as the little pair, and the two were very close and shared a room. Anastasia would often dominate her older sister, and if Anastasia did anything naughty, like teasing or tripping people up, Maria always tried to apologize, but could never stop her younger sister. One day they, Olga and Tatiana, made a house with chairs at one end of the nursery and shut out poor Marie, telling her she might be the footman, but that she should stay outside. She suddenly dashed across the room, rushed into the house, dealt each sister a slap in the face, and ran into the next room, coming back dressed in a doll's cloak and hat, and with her hands full of small toys, she said, I won't be a footman. I'll be the kind, good aunt who brings presents, she said. She then distributed her gifts, kissed her nieces, and sat down. The other children looked shamefacedly from one to the other, and then Tatiana said, We were too cruel to poor little Marie, and she really couldn't help beating us. They had learned their lesson. From that hour, they respected her rights in the family. Maria was an average student who would do her work, but was never really interested. She most enjoyed her art lessons and daydreaming. Like her sisters, she learnt subjects including French, Russian, English, dance, and history. Maria was also known for her great physical strength. She was described as plump, broadly built, and built like her paternal grandfather Alexander III, sturdy and strong. According to General Voiko, Maria could lift her siblings off of the ground, and when she reached her late teens, she could go as far as lifting her tutors. When Alexei was sick and wanted to be moved, he could call out, Mashka, carry me! Maria received her regiment in the year 1912, the 5th Kazansky Dragoons. The uniform colors were a dark green and blue with a red and white trim. Many people agreed that Maria would make a very good mother housewife if she was not the daughter of a Tsar. She dreamed of marrying a soldier and having a large family one day, Maria was said to be a natural around children. It was reported she would snatch a baby from its mother's arms and give it loads of kisses. Margareta Eager recalls, One day, the little Grand Duchess Marie was looking out of the window at a regiment of soldiers marching past and exclaimed, Oh, I love these dear soldiers. I should like to kiss them all. I said, Marie, nice little girls don't kiss soldiers. She made no remark. A few days afterwards, we had a children's party, and the Grand Duke Constantine's children were amongst the guests. 
One of them, having reached 12 years of age, had been put into the corps de cadet and came in his uniform. He wanted to kiss his little cousin Marie, but she put her hand over her mouth and drew back from the proffered embrace. Go away, soldier, said she with great dignity. I don't kiss soldiers. The boy was greatly delighted at being taken for a real soldier, and not a little amused at the same time. However, after Prince Carol of Romania was turned down by her elder sister, the Grand Duchess Olga, he asked for Maria's hand in marriage. However, as Anna Virabova wrote, he made a formal proposal for her hand, but the emperor, declaring that Marie was nothing more than a schoolgirl, good-naturedly laughed the prince's proposal aside. However, she had no official proposals. The war soon came around, and in 1914, when Maria was just 15, her and 13-year-old Anastasia, too young to be nurses, would visit the soldiers at a private hospital in the grounds of Tsarsko Silo, talking to them and playing board games with them, keeping their spirits high. The two girls very much enjoyed doing this. In late 1914, Maria had to have her tonsils removed, and during the operation, she bled so much, more than normal, that it was possible she was a carrier of the blood illness, hemophilia, inherited from Alexandra's side of the family. The doctor said it was so severe, he did not want to carry on with the operation, but under the orders of Alexandra, was instructed to continue with the operation. Maria and her family would often visit the Tsar and Alexei at the war headquarters in Mogliev. There, she fell in love with one of the officers, Nikolai Dmitrievich Demenkov. When she returned to Tsarsko Selo, Maria very often asked her father to give her regards to Demenkov. As recalled in her elder sister Olga's diary, Maria often got excited and once wrote, Nicholas D. is in service. Maria is doing much noise and screaming at the balcony. Soon, 1917 came around, and at the height of the revolution, Maria and her siblings were struck down with the measles. Around this time, the Tsar had abdicated, and the whole family were under house arrest as Tsarsko Silo. Maria became very, very ill, also having double pneumonia on top of the measles, and Dr. Botkin even warned Alexandra because she was very ill that Maria might not survive. However, Maria did survive and only became thin after her illness. In August 1917, the entire family left Tsarsko Selo for the town of Tobolsk in Siberia. For Maria, she liked Tobolsk and told her tutor, Sidney Gibbs, that she could make herself quite happy there. In April 1918, Maria and her parents made the final journey to their final destination, the city of Yekaterinburg, also in Siberia, and soon in May 1918, Olga, Tatiana, Anastasia, and Alexei joined them, along with some others, including Dr. Botkin and Anna Demidova. Life at the Ipatiev house was very different. The girls learned how to make bread and had to do their own chores and laundry. On one occasion, one of the guards at the Ipatiev house had forgotten himself and told an off-color joke to the duchesses. Tatiana ran from the room as pale as death, and Maria scolded the guards for their bad language. Maria and her family remained there until the early hours of July 17, 1918, when the entire family and other members of the household were shot. Maria was not even 20 years old and had only just turned 19 years of age. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos for more videos like these. Anyways, I love you guys and see you guys in the next video.